Hello everybody, happy Sunday. This is Tom from 20th Century Rescue. And um, I decided to show you a couple of things today. Um, one in particular, which I cannot believe um, hasn't sold. And I refuse to budge on the price, number one. Um, because it is uh, an exquisite example of reverse painted art. Um, it's actually, it is a piece of art, but it's a, it's a tray. And uh, it's from the, well, I'm assuming it's from the four, uh, 40s or 30s, maybe even earlier. Um, this is just hi, uh, an exquisite piece of work here. There is some wear to it. Um, I don't know if you can see. There is minor flaking on this. And it's listed, so anywhere should be in the listing as well. Um, but uh, people are, I mean, this is, this is, I hung this on the wall. And you can see the back now, of course, is this part right here is rusted. But uh, I used to have this right on the wall, along with, uh, it's tw uh, it's a another one which isn't as pretty, I don't think, but this is just a great piece of of artwork of uh, peacock and the palms, or is that what is that rhododendron? I don't know. Doesn't matter. I don't care. Uh, the silver lattice work and the very popular uh, blue and black uh, just re it just screams Art Deco. Me. Um, there is rust on it. If you cared to de rust this thing, you probably could. Um, there is some wear. Let me see if it can be picked up here. Mm, yeah, right right here. And yeah, there's, there's a couple spots, nothing huge, but uh, you gotta be aware that it's not in mint, mint condition. Um, we're lucky it survived as well as it has, quite frankly, with all the... I don't know where somebody kept this, clearly in a damp environment. Um, don't you hate it when you, you go to an estate sale or a tag sale, and uh, there's this just beautiful piece of uh, whatever it is, whether it's this or a piece of artwork, and somebody has just let it sit in a damp basement for the last 25 years. It just kills me. Just kills me. Uh, and then they want 200 bucks for it. So, um, uh, where was I? Tag sale. Yeah, it was tag sale two weeks ago. Beautiful uh, Dragonware tea set. She wanted $600. Was it $600? No, it was $200. $200. Uh, it was an exceptional uh, set with uh, a pot and I think a creamer and six cups and saucers, or maybe it was four cups and saucers. It was really nice and worth every penny, but that's not a tag sale. Um, they need to get their descriptions right. Anyway, here is tray number two. This is much simpler, but the glass background is more of a slag glass, and it's of a, a bluebird um, in, in very much of a, well, I mean, it's got a more Victorian sensibility to it. Um, and that's Milo playing in the background. The cat that is never seen but always heard. Um, and this is, this is, uh, I like it. It's, it's, uh, this too was, was on the wall. Um, there are no markings. I have no idea who made these, uh, or who manufactured them. And you can see my lovely hanging string job, uh, for hanging them on the wall here. And there he's off. There he goes. When he's not getting any attention, he makes sure to get some. Um, there you go. So that's tray number two. I can't believe these two have not sold. Uh, they are not the same price, um, but they would make a great gift for somebody. Um, and they, they do make great wall art. People do collect these things. Um, so those are two things that I wanted you to to see, and I can't honestly believe that they have not sold. Um, 
What else is, ah, that thing. This is not a dinosaur egg. Um, God, the name of the artist right when I need it escapes me. Anyway, this is, this is a pod printer lava Ikebana base. It's quite large. It is signed or marked. And I'm so sorry, but the name of the artist escapes me. He is contemporary. Um, he's out of California. And it's got a tinge of blue in it. And in the pictures and listing, I have um, a friend had these uh, copper and brass. Um, what do you call those t uh, things near swamps? with the brown, whatever. And they are perfect for this. So I, I told her I would, uh, I would buy those and uh, perhaps sell them with this. Uh, you know, it wouldn't adjust the price any. But um, this is a great piece of contemporary art, uh, hand done, California. Um, and it's rather unusual. It would go in a, a contemporary environment, obviously. Um, and needs something in it. I would not put water in this, by the way. Um, you can, but who wants to empty this thing? Um, so I just put something dried in it or metal, you know, metal stock. Look at the pictures in the listing. I'll, I'll put the listing in the, in the video comment section and you can see what I put in it, brass and copper. It, it goes perfectly with this thing. Um, so this also, is an unusual piece, uh, which I am not surprised. It didn't fly off the shelf, but it is a, it's an odd, wonderful, fantastic piece of art. Um, now to the mundane. Uh, yeah, okay. Don't break that thing, Tom. Um, here is a uh, print, I believe it's a print, it's hand, um, maybe it's a serigraph, I don't know, uh, by Rafael Abacassis, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, it is signed down here, it is signed in the piece here, um, and it says hand touched. Um, I don't know what it says. I don't read Hebrew. So if anybody out there does read Hebrew, what these letters mean, please tell me, because they are repeated. This and this is also repeated down here. I think you can tell. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful piece, but I don't know what it says. And it was uh, secured in the back uh, with tape. It looks pretty well preserved. Uh, he is a current artist living in southern Israel, um, I believe, born in 1933. So he's getting up there. Um, and I don't know when these were done, maybe the 80s. Uh, but this is not listed yet, but it will be. It will be. Now, for something a little bit <coughs> mundane, uh, but nice. Nice seedling shade. Um, posies. What are these? Maybe they're wild roses. I don't know. Uh, blue and pink. Perfect for a bedroom. Um, or even a hallway, if you want. It's got an interesting scalloped edge uh, with detail. Um, It is large. It is. Uh, it does have some paint loss too, um, in one area. Well, one area here. Can you see it? Can I got. I can't even see it. Right there, and uh, a couple of spots, tiny, tiny spots. And if you notice the clear glass. 
heat, or the however they decorated this, uh, they left some un unpainted or unmilked glass. Um, I don't know how this is done. Anyway, it is just FYI for circumference or diameter rather. It is 16 inches at the widest diameter and uh, generally about I think four four inches tall. Um, so this is this is listed. The trays are listed. The piece of art is not listed. Uh, the uh, Raphael uh, of Assis, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, is not listed. I did just do a, um, a video of this table this morning uh, because somebody, this is tessellated stone. Uh, it's a Maitland Smith console table uh, with a brass banding on the inside inset. Uh, it's a beautiful table. Somebody asked me if, if I would ship it to California. And it is listed as um, local pickup only, but uh, I think either party can use U-Ship. So I, I wrote him back saying what the quote was for U-Ship, and same with this lamp back up here, which I still haven't done a, a solo video on. Um, you know, anything that's listed as local pickup, you can ask if uh, it can be shipped, but I'm not packing it, and I'm not bringing it to a freight place. It's going to have to be picked up. Uh, so that's why uh, uShip, uShip.com, um, is popular among sellers. I've never had to use it before, um, but I've never heard a bad thing about it. So what you do, and this is not sponsored by uShip at all, but perhaps it should be, <laughs> uh, you go in. You put in the zip code where it's being picked up from, the zip code where it's being brought to, the dimensions, and the approximate weight, I think. Did I have to? I'm not sure if I had to put that in. Um, and then you'll get a, a an average cost of what it might cost. Then what they ask you to do is create a listing for your piece, and you can determine how much you want to spend. So for this, the minimum was, I don't know, $285 for shipping and uh, on the left hand side, unlikely to be picked up by anybody. Uh, and then 505, I think, was the, the middle range. Um, they said somebody might respond in three to five days. And the, the high end was 740 or 50, I think. Um, which is more along the lines of what you would expect across country from Connecticut to Los Angeles. Um, and you put up what you would like to pay. I don't know if that includes insurance, um, but that's, uh, you know, I've never had to go through the entire process. So if you're interested um, in this table um, or anything that is listed as local pickup only, uh, check out UShip. Um, and you might be able to, to do it that way. Um, and if shipping is just you know ridiculous, um, seven hundred dollars across country is not a bad price for something this large, and it's not extremely heavy either. Uh, but if you know, don't be afraid to ask. All right, ask me any questions you might have. And before we go, I forgot. I want to show you one of my favorite pieces of artwork. This is not for sale. But it is, it's a funny one. I used to, uh, I used to have this in another apartment in a bathroom and I would literally, when somebody uh, used the, the facilities, I would count down from 10 and see how long it took them to guffaw when they saw it because it is, it's, it's a great piece. It's by an artist named Al Roby, uh, who did things in the 50s and 60s, um, and it's this piece. Do it. I love this thing. Um, and it has uh, oh, some biographical information on the back of it. Al Roby was born in Massachusetts in 1922, 
and as a child learned how to make lino cuts from an elder brother. After World War II, he settled in New York City, attending Cooper Union Art School and later the Art Students League. Um, blah, 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 blah. His lino cuts are characterized by many layers of inks which form textures and broken colors as a foil to the whimsy of his usual subjects. Um, I am not letting this one go. <laughs> it's just too funny. Um, in the back, there's, uh, I should really reframe it. The frame is awful. It needs some, uh, I've got so much stuff I need to reframe, it's not even funny. Um, but anyway, if you have any questions, please comment, please follow, please like, and I will see you probably next weekend. This is Tom from 20th Century Rescue. Have a great Sunday.